Thank you all. I'm sure we all agree it's been a rewarding day, and thank you for your contributions, and have a safe journey home. Um, we're now going to have a closing performance from Julie McNamara, and who's a performer, a writer, and disability artist whose work is a passionate appeal for social justice and gives voice to the unheard on the margins of our communities. Um, it's important if any of you want to take photographs that you don't because uh, flash photography or flashing uh, smartphones would be a problem for Julie. Uh, so if you would not do that. So is Julie ready? Thank you. How are you doing? Good. Yeah? What about the back? We're just testing the mic, don't worry. And the doors are still open. I speak for people who've come from locked in spaces, not least because I've spent too many years in and out myself. Started off with the care homes when we were kids, graduated to psychiatric hospital. How's that sounding at the back? Are you like that? It's a bit tinny, isn't it? Can we warm me up? They've worried me mind till I'm weary. Now they drown me in drugs to despair. Oh, I'm on the caring circus with the services who care. Now watch me soft shoe shuffle on this diazepam dazzle dance days. We're all the world to forget me fog. And my whole life's just a phase. Just call me the Prozac princess while I rattle round and round. I'm on your magical medical miracle tour. I'm on the mystery tour they've found. Oh, they tell me I'll feel much better. No, really. Diazepam's the dope. Britain's sunshine smarty, the quack, quack, quack's new hope. But you won't bomb me into oblivion. You won't burn these brain cells dry. Because this zombie's into rebellion. This baby's going to fly. So I flushed the phenos down the toilet. I gave the diazepam to the dog. I buried the barbiturates in the garden. I'm going to get myself a job. Hey, I could always be a chemist. <laughs> I'd just like you to know no dogs were hurt in the creation <laughs> of that piece of work. I was born in the middle of a rebellion. That's to say, my mum is Protestant and my dad was Catholic and in the part of Ireland they were raised, it wasn't the done thing to even sniff around each other's hem, let alone cross the floor and create five children out of wedlock. It wasn't the done thing. And so Father Brannigan of the local Catholic mission decided he would make my mother into one of his pioneers of the Catholic Church. Now, you haven't met my mother. You will shortly. Let's say this. I am the most demure member of the family. My mother has been a role model of the finest order. And Brannigan thinks he can persuade her. Oh, he took her on one side, and for a whole month, he taught her the ways of the faith. The faith. Catechism. Our Father, the glory be. Station to the cross. Oh, she can be as wicked as sin now. A few Hail Marys and she's back in her kitchen in half an hour. But this is Shirley McNamara. And so for a whole month he would take a little chancel of holy water and make signs of the cross. You're a Catholic. You're a Catholic. You're a Catholic. So she came to believe she was a Catholic. And so would you with a tap dripping on your head, so you would. And they drunk the broom, and they were married in a Catholic church. And in the eyes of the Lord, apparently that was good. After five children now lost in limbo. But not three weeks after that wedding, Brannigan comes into her house, walking in through the back kitchen door. Now, it was a Friday. <sighs> no offence to animal rights and vegans among you. There was no denying the reality of what was in that pan that Friday morning. Psst. A great big pig.
pig's rump. <laughs> My mother didn't turn a hair as Brannigan in through her kitchen. And she stood there in symbols of her heterosexual power. <laughs> Fur slippers and rubber gloves. She simply opened the cupboard overhead. And as he stood there sniffing, how are you, Mrs. McNamara? How's the family doing? She carried on with her great big pig's rump. On a Friday! And out of the cupboard came her own holy water, a bottle of high commissioner. And quick as a flash, she's flashing that rump. And now she's making signs of the cross. You're a fish. You're a fish. You're a fish. That's an old traditional story and given to me in Belfast where some of our family are still not speaking to us, but there we are. I want to speak for some of those excluded voices that we haven't heard today. And I changed the way I practice for the sake of one beautiful woman, I would say a national treasure from the theatres in Australia. And I told that story on stage in Adelaide. And this young woman, feisty young woman with a learning disability, who we later had funding from the World Congress on Down Syndrome to pay for her to come to both Ireland and England. And sadly, we didn't make it to Wales, but we bloody will next time. Rachel High, her name is. And she came up to me after I'd been telling that story and presenting this piece called Pigtails. And she says to me, would you mentor me? This is Rachel's way of being intense when she has something to ask. She tends to sway, which I now do. I find it soothing. And I stopped and said, Rachel, I live a long, long way away. She said, I know. I was born in Middlesex. You will get money, and you will come to Adelaide and mentor me here. And I said, well, how am I going to do that? She said, I will speak to my director. She will write to the big people in government, and they will give us money. Blow me down, she did. And 18 months later, I was invited out to go and work with her. And she then came back, funded by the World Congress on Down Syndrome. Horrible title, but they gave us the money, so we're very grateful. Deeply, deeply grateful. And we were working in London. Now, I think I'm so right on. You know how we do sometimes? I've been used to working with excluded voices because having been in locked in spaces myself, I have this internal moral engine to put it right so that actually everybody is in this together and we all have privilege and responsibility. So I'm stood there outside the studio and I'm suddenly being a bit quick with Rachel because we're on our way back to rehearsal in a studio and studio time's expensive and time is money and I'm thinking we haven't got a lot of money, we're running out. Rachel, we need to move. You keep stopping. Rachel wouldn't budge, apart from this wonderful swaying when she's feeling intense. I said, Rachel, we need to move now. And she turned to me and straight to my face, she said, what's wrong with slow? And it stopped me right there, and it opened my heart wide open, because what is wrong with slow? And every message that this young woman receives, everywhere she goes, is that she is wrong because she is slow. Slower than me, slower than you, maybe. And what are we saying to people with learning disabilities who are flung to the fringes of the margins of our communities if we say, oh, you're too slow? So you're too expensive because you mean more time. Or you come in a wheelchair and we ain't got room for you. And not only do you come in a wheelchair, maybe you're deaf and you need sign language as well. And oh my God, that's more money on the access budget. And do I have to sit down and change that budget again? So I challenge everyone here to remember the voices in the margins where we still position people. 
and look for people. Don't expect them to come into our emporiums for the privileged elite. Don't expect them to come into our theatres, even if they're in small community centres. Go and look for people. Make relationships. You know, a cup of tea to the local homeless guy that you know sits there waiting for change every morning. Or the young woman that sells papers at the end of that yard. You see her every evening. Give her a cup of tea. Have a chat. Bring her in. Build relationships. And I'm not suggesting you're not doing that now. But I'm passionate about doing this every moment of my life because I'm driven towards social justice. And we need it now more than ever. As Toni Morrison said, now is the time. We have no room for despair. We have no time to rest on our laurels. Because we need now to use our language, to use our poetry, to use our art. Because it's only using our words and our language, whoever or wherever we come from, that actually heals civilizations. So, let's not get lost in our despair. I'm going to rev it up now. There was a piece of work I did with a group of women and young girls in Bosnia. We were in Visegrad, not too far from a space that had been used for the most despicable acts of human destructiveness. And I went into that space wondering if those women and girls would join me. But they did. Expect the unexpected, because what I found was a great deal of courage and a determination to rebuild in the face of all odds, against the odds. And we sang in that building, and we're going to sing now. And for those of you I heard say, oh, thank God they didn't ask me to sing in that workshop, because <laughs> I don't sing, <laughs> I'd ask you to suspend disbelief. I'm going to ask you, if you're comfortable, to stand. I'm going to ask you now to get up on your feet. Just pretend this is not song. We're in fields, right? For those of you who've been looking out all day and mourning the loss of your team last week, now's your time, because it's a field song. Nobody at any point is going to stop and go, die, you're off key. Effie, that should have been a B flat, love. No, none of that. It's a call and response. It was given to me by a woman from KwaZulu-Natal, and we sang it in Bosnia, in Visegrad. And we changed the vibrations in the room. And it goes like this. Ole, yo. And you sing back. Ole, yo. Lovely. Go on, go for it. Give it welly. Close your eyes. You can pretend... You've got your head in the sand, you're an ostrich and nobody knows you, nobody, you'll never be seen again. <laughs> Anything goes. Ole yo! 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 Hola, 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 hola. We're going to go a little bit faster now. We're going to do it one more time. You're going to bounce on the end of me. Don't let me go. Hola, 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 hola. Oh, la hi la 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 That's beautiful. Thank you for indulging me. <laughs> it just means hello. I'm going to send you off home with the words from John O'Donoghue. And um, this is a risky one because, never mind, I'm going to do it. 
In Irish, it means the blessing. Bianacht. So for those of you who've had deep conversations with today, who have expressed your grief at what has happened, so be it. Let's grieve and get through it because every single one of us has got to get out the other side because only we as artists can pull together the rest of us, those who are non-professional artists, and we work together in relationship to heal our communities, all of us. On the day when the weight deadens on your shoulders and you stumble, May the clay dance to balance you. And when your eyes freeze behind the grey window and the ghost of loss gets into you, may a flock of many colours, indigo, red, green and azure blue, come to awaken in you a meadow of delight. When the canvas frays in the curragh of thought and a stain of ocean blackens beneath you, May there come across those waters a path of yellow moonlight to bring you safely home. May the nourishment of the earth be yours. May clarity of light be yours. May the fluency of the ocean be yours. And the protection of our ancestors be yours. And so, may a slow wind work these words of love around you an invisible cloak to mind your life. Safe home. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.